day, everyone. I thought for a little change today I would start our reflection by doing a little bit of roaming about in the garden. Everybody knows that gardens are nice things to have and to look at, but all gardeners will tell you that there is a constant problem and that is weeds. So let me show you this here. Weeds and no weeds. This is my fourth bridge task, keeping our drive as clear as possible from weeds. And in some places it is even worse. Now weeds in a garden are one thing, but if you're a farmer that is relying on crops for your sustenance, weeds are a whole new ball game of a problem. In fact, the Bible has quite a lot to say about the subject of weeds. And before we turn to God's word today to read one of these passages, shall we pray? Our Lord and our Heavenly Father, we plant a seed and we pray for success. We pray against weeds and do our best to protect our tender shoots. But every now and then a weed appears, a scornful voice, an ill-mannered remark, a misjudged comment, a thoughtless word. Here, wherever we are today, in this place, at this time, we come to our God. God who cares tenderly and lovingly whenever given the chance. Come, let us worship the sower of good seeds, our head gardener and Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's turn to one of these passages from God's Word this morning. And we're going to look at Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 13. The parable of the tares, or the parable of the weeds. You'll find this in Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 24 to 30, skip a few verses, and then pick up the story again when Jesus returns to the same theme from verses 36 through to 43. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he that's Jesus, left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them 
is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen. And may God bless this reading from his word. This parable of Jesus is about waiting. And waiting is something I think nearly all of us find difficult. The farmer waits for the harvest time, watching in frustration as the weeds grow alongside the wheat. And waiting is a part of the essence of God's kingdom. Jesus' followers didn't want to wait. If what he said were true, that the kingdom he spoke of was really present where Jesus was, coming to birth and what he was doing, then they wanted the whole thing at once. They weren't interested in God's timetable. They had one of their own and expected God to conform to it. That's what happens in this story Jesus told. That's what the servants say about the weeds. They want to go straight away into the cornfield and root out the weeds. The farmer restrains them, because life is never that simple. In their zeal to rid the field of weeds, they would pull up wheat as well. Some of us are more familiar with this passage using the word tares rather than weeds. What is a tear? A tear is a type of Eurasian ryegrass that looked a lot like wheat. However, it was highly poisonous, inducing sleepiness and nausea. So a tear looked like wheat, it grew up amongst the wheat and was difficult to remove. Looking only on the outside, the tares were easy to harvest along with wheat, easy to ingest, easy to swallow. Once inside you, they made you sleepy and sick, perhaps even to the point of death. So, dangerous to some. An impact maybe just a little like coronavirus? There were groups of agitators in Jesus' day, only too ready to trample into God's field and pull up what looked like weeds. Some were eager to fight against pagans or against Jews they reckoned had compromised on their beliefs. These people may have intended to serve God's will. They were longing for God to act and were prepared to help him by acting themselves. But part of Jesus' message is to say that the true kingdom of God doesn't come like that because God himself isn't like that. At the heart of this story is the note of patience. Not just the patience of the servants who have to watch and wait, but the patience of God himself. As Tom Wright suggests in his comments on these verses, God didn't 
and doesn't enjoy the sight of a cornfield with weeds all over the place. But nor does he relish the thought of declaring harvest time too soon and destroying wheat along with the weeds. That is why the New Testament speaks so much about God's compassion, delaying his judgment so that more people could be within the kingdom at the end. Jesus still today needs his followers to live with the tension of believing that the kingdom was indeed arriving in and through Jesus' own work and that the kingdom would come, would fully arrive, not all in a bang, but through a process, like the slow growth of a field of wheat. We who live after Calvary and Easter know that God did indeed act suddenly and decisively at that moment in history. When today we long for God to act, to put our world to rights, we must remind ourselves that he has already done so, and that what we are now awaiting is the full outworking of these events. We wait with patience, not like people in a dark room wondering if anyone will ever come with a lighted candle, but like people in the early morning who know that the sun has arisen and are now waiting for the full brightness of midday. When God's great human harvest is complete, we won't be like hundreds of identical bundles of wheat. We will be as different as the flowers and shrubs in a well-stocked garden, a garden finally without weeds, because the last traces of sin will have been eradicated, not just from other people, but eradicated from us. I wonder what is testing your patience at the present time. Is there something that you can learn today from the patience that God manifests in Jesus' parable of the weeds? Let us pray. All this world is God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield, wheat and tares together sown unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade, and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. Lord of harvest, we come before you now with these words from a hymn that we usually sing just once a year at harvest time. Lord of harvest, you are the God who sows and the God who reaps, the God who allows growth even in the hard places. Lord of harvest, you are the good and perfect God who waits patiently for the right time. Send us out now into the fields of your world to plant hope amidst the weeds and seeds of life. And may we learn to scatter love wisely till you gather us in once more. Amen.